that morning. You excited about God's house or what? Amen? Amen. Woo. How can you not go in the house of the Lord and not shout and sing? It's wonderful. Thank you all for that music this morning. And I ask you this morning, lead on Good Shepherd through the sermon this morning. Amen. Thank you, praise team and choir. They were all kind of one combo today. They look beautiful up here. I want to welcome to Southside Baptist Church. If this is your first visit, you've just entered the dysfunctional zone, okay? We're very dysfunctional because we just happen to think that Jesus Christ is the one and only way to heaven, amen? And that ain't dysfunctional with us. Announcements? None. Okay. I don't like announcements. Either. Read a bulletin. Today. I think they're over there. Okay. But this morning, we're going to be in some most exciting scripture. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 12, verse 42. A greater than Solomon is here. Amen? Man, we're going to get excited this morning. I just love it. But first, there's many books written that examine how our words are simply the vehicles that convey our thoughts and emotions. What you put in your mind has an effect on what you think. Does trash in equal trash equal out? If so, then our thoughts should be considered our highest priority, especially since the health and welfare of our lives are a byproduct of our thoughts. Our enemy wants our minds filled with all sorts of trash and vain imaginations. So let's think about what we think about every day when we think. Amen? <laughs> the thought for today is this. Reputation is never completely secured. It is being continually earned. You can ruin your reputation in just a couple of words, gang. A couple of words. Let's stand now in honor of our God. As we look at Matthew 12, 42, I'll be reading King James. Now, Jesus just kind of went to battle a little bit with the, with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and stuff like that, and they, didn't, they just didn't believe who he was, okay? And then, and then in verse 42, Jesus, this is all red letter stuff. He says, the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And here it is. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Woo! Man, it just curls my toes already. Father God, we love you with all our hearts and our souls here today, dear Lord. Let us bring our minds, let us bring our hearts, let us bring our spirits Combined with your spirit today, Lord, and let, let us get a blessing out of your word, not out of what I say, out of your word and what it means to us today. Hide me behind the cross today that they only hear your word, dear Lord. Thank you for the excitement in the church, dear Lord. We thank you for the past couple of weeks of the great vacation Bible school, dear Lord, the 4th of July celebrations, dear Lord. We thank you for all of that. But right now, let's come to the house of the Lord to praise you. That we love you with all of our heart and all of our soul. Thank you for our members, our friends, our visitors today, dear Lord. May we all walk out of here today a little bit closer to Jesus than when we walked in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> okay. So this morning, I want to give honor to our dear, loving Savior, whose glory and, and whose name this house has actually been built on. Now, the Lord Jesus was facing a certain day, on this certain day, some enemies. And if you're going to be a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, you're going to have some enemies. If you stand strong enough on the Lord, the people will recognize you as a believer. Now, the Lord was facing a certain day, facing these enemies. They were scribes and Pharisees. They had questioned him. They had criticized him. They had interrogated him. They had picked at him. They were saying, give us a sign to prove yourself to us. And the Lord said a remarkable thing to them in Matthew 12, 42. Let me read that again to you. The queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. 
For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Woo, man. In fact, he says, I'm standing right here, dudes, okay? Now, Solomon was the greatest builder that Israel had ever known. He built palaces, gardens, like unimaginable back in his day. And he dwelt with more wealth, more power, more affluence, and prestige than any other ruler before or after. Now, here was the Lord Jesus, a peasant prophet, saying to these Pharisees and Sadducees, he said, if you only knew that there's a greater than Solomon right here in your midst. Wow. Because they knew all about Solomon. And why did Queen of Sheba come all the way from the uttermost parts of the earth to see Solomon? Bible scholars believe that that, that was somewhere around Ethiopia that she was at. She came all the way to Jerusalem to learn the great wisdom of Solomon. And Jesus says, if you don't get right with me, you're going, to, you know, she's going to rise up one day and she's going to judge you, condemn you with the greater, with the power and the greater than Solomon ever had. Now, can you imagine what must have gone on in the minds of these Pharisees and Sadducees? This, this nothing that they presumed was saying a greater than Solomon is here? He says, you're nothing but a peasant's son. You're nothing but a carpenter's son. Solomon was born in a palace. You were born in a stable. Solomon was born in mighty, magnificent Jerusalem. You were born in Bethlehem. Why, Solomon had thousands of servants. You don't have any. You just got a bunch of knuckleheads following you. That's what they thought. Solomon wore, Solomon wore a kingly robe. You have a seamless gown on. Why, Solomon drank from vessels of gold. He had to drink from a harlot's cup. Wow, remember when he asked to drink at the well? So in other words, they had been watching every step Jesus had made, okay? You didn't even have any, anything to draw the water out of the well with. You ain't got nothing, dude. But Solomon was rich. And you're just a peasant and a pauper. And you're calling yourself a better one than Solomon? Solomon had armies. Now, I want to give you a, a few ways to show that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is greater than Solomon. Amen? One thing, the wisdom of Jesus is greater than the wisdom of Solomon. Wow. Solomon had, had incredible wisdom. To know how much Solomon had, all you have to do is read the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is, is a great book in the Bible, and most of it was written by Solomon. You know that, that it is said that Solomon had memorized 3,000 Proverbs? He had an amazing brain. He had memorized 1,500 songs. This man had an incredible mind. He knew all about creation. This dude knew biology. He knew botany, the study of plants. But look here, brothers and sisters, with me right now. Everything that Solomon knew about creation, Jesus, in his wisdom, had created it. Whoa, man, amen? In John 1, 3, it says, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Amen? We have one that's greater than Solomon. Solomon knew all about the ways of the fish. He knew all about fishing. But our Lord, on a certain day, caused some fish to go into a net. They call it the 153 fish miracle. They couldn't even pull the, the nets in. So many fish. 
Now I ask you this morning, on your next fishing trip, would you take Solomon or Jesus? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> I think you have a little bit more luck with Jesus. Amen? He just says, cast over bird, dude. Yes, yes, Lord, yes. yes. <laughs> Let me go buy a net. Okay. Why? Solomon knew all about wind cycles. He was, he was a genius. But the Lord, Jesus, spoke to the winds, calmed the storms, and made the raging sea like a moonlit pond in the spring day evening. Listen, the Lord, Jesus, is so much greater than Solomon in wisdom who was the most brilliant person of all time, Solomon was. Anyway, though, you know, when you question that, a lot of people will say, well, Einstein was, a, was probably the most brilliant person. One of the last things that he said in 1955, just before he died, Einstein, he says, I feel like a man chained. If I could only be free from the shackles of my intellectual smallness. Einstein said this then I could understand the universe in which I live. Mr. Einstein, the answer to the universe in which you live is the one who made it, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? 1 Corinthians 1.30, an amplified version, says, But it is from him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, revealing his plan of salvation and righteousness, making us acceptable to God, and sanctification, making us holy and setting us apart for God, and redemption, providing our ransom for the penalty of sin. That's one that's greater than Solomon. Now next, the works of Jesus are greater than the works of Solomon. Solomon built a home. Oh, he prepared a massive house. His home featured two parallel, long, gigantic rooms and courtyards surrounding it. They said there was 15 to 30 rooms connected to this courtyard. The palace had two entrances on the east and the west. Great entrances, great buildings, monumental, gargantuan gates. But I want to tell you today, our dear Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, has prepared a better house. You read in the Gospel of John, and he says, he says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I'd have told you. I go to prepare for you a place. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, ye may be also, woo, man, in my father's house. Solomon could set a great table of food also. But I tell you something, Solomon couldn't feed 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves. Amen. Try that out, Solly boy. Anyway. <laughs> Solomon could not turn plain water into sparkling wine. And I'll tell you something else he couldn't do. Even if he could have, dear friend, he could never have satisfied the hunger of our hearts. Only Jesus could do that with his salvation. A greater than Solomon is here. And then the next, the worship of Jesus is greater than the worship of Solomon. Second Chronicles 7, 5 says, And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 20 and 2,000 oxen. How'd you like to be an oxen around that place? Okay. That's 22,000 oxen he sacrificed in one day. And that now, they were, that, they were so worth, worth so much money, that'd be like destroying 22,000 Cadillacs today. They were very expensive. And 120,000 sheep in one day he sacrificed. 
So the king and all the palace dedicated the house of God by sacrificing all these animals. That's a mighty big worship service. Listen to Hebrews 10.4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should took away, take away your sins. So all of that means nothing. Then listen to Hebrews 10.12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, that's Jesus Christ, forever sat down at the right hand of God. Amen? Solomon may have made a great sacrifice, but he never made a sacrifice that would compare to the one great sacrifice that could come on the dark day of Calvary. When the Lord Jesus laid his life down, shed his precious blood for you and for me. And I tell you that a greater Solomon is here in worship. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done. Thank God that the blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. I say hallelujah to that today. He cleanses us from all sins. Every stain, every blur, every blemish. Next, the wealth of Jesus is greater than the wealth of Solomon. Solomon had great wealth and prosperity. There was probably never, ever a king as wealthy as King Solomon. And yet Jesus, speaking of all the wealth of Solomon, said, listen, a greater than Solomon is here. And you know why? Solomon had gold and silver. But the Bible says in Psalms 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and the and all that they that dwell therein, everything belongs to the Lord. Not just what I can put up in a, in, in a palace, but the whole world belongs to the Lord. All the cattle on 10,000 hills, all the gold and the silver, all the rubies, all the diamonds, and everything belongs to our Lord. Let me tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ. While the Queen of Sheba gave gifts to Solomon, Jesus has people give him their lives. I mean, have you given Jesus your life? That's what he wants. Jesus is more than all the world to me. Is he that to you? I've given my life and everything in it to Jesus Christ. Not, I'm not saying I'm better than anybody. But, we, but when you're a, a child of God, you serve somebody who's better than everybody. I want to give one more. And one more. My day-by-day -day life I want to give to Jesus Christ. And I want to say with the hymnist, love is so amazing, so divine. Demands my soul, my life, my all. Isaac Watts wrote that in a song. And Jesus is worth it. When Solomon died, he didn't leave me anything. But I'm an heir of God and a joint heir because of Jesus Christ. The workers of, of Jesus are greater than the workers of Solomon. That's the fifth thing we're talking about. The queen of Sheba, Sheba she comes in, and if you read the scripture before that, and, and, and she says she saw, and back, back in Kings, how happy the servants were. She couldn't believe. They weren't just slaves. They were happy. They love to serve King Solomon. In 1 Kings 10, 8, it says, Happy are these men. Happy are, they, are, are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Your people are happy to be around you. Why? She said, Solomon, these people that work for you, they're so happy. How would you like to serve in the court? of the wealthiest and the wisest king that ever lived. But let me tell you right here, a greater than Solomon is here. Because of the workers of the Lord Jesus Christ, they have given him all. We ought to love serving our Lord. We serve him with our lifestyles. We serve him with our thoughts. We serve him with our voices. We serve him with our service. You talk about joy. 
And working for Solomon may have found happiness, but Jesus gives in 1 Peter 1, 8, it tells us this. Whom have, having not seen, ye love. And whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what a worship service to be. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I thank God that I know the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I thank God that I've been saved. Amen? I thank God that I can serve Him. Thank God that I have a, a purpose in life that is steadfast and true. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus' workers are great in number. There's millions around the world. Greater in joy, greater in sacrifice. Thank you, God, for this. And the next thing, and the last one, I'm not going to be here too long this morning, but I want to beat the Methodist to Whataburger. Okay. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> well, we've been here an hour already. Oh, shucks. Okay, anyway. So, <laughs> the worth of Jesus is greater than the worth of Solomon. Amen. King Solomon sat on a mighty, majestic th throne. Nobody has ever seen a throne like Solomon's throne. And if you go back in Kings, it describes an unbelievable throne he sat on. So if God said that Solomon was worthy to sit on such a throne, have you thought about the throne that our Lord Jesus Christ sits on? But a greater than Solomon is here. Our Jesus is enthroned in the glory of the Lord right now. Hebrews 1.8 says, But unto the Son... He saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Hallelujah. Who is Jesus? He's not just another man. He's God incarnate. He sits upon the throne of the Godhead. But not only does he sit upon the throne, he sits upon the throne of grace. Thank you for grace. And we all better be grateful for that. Amen. Not only is, is a greater than Solomon here, let's try a greater than anybody is here. And not only is a greater than anybody here, he's greater than anybody all put together here. And his name is Jesus. There's never been another close to Jesus. There never will be another close to Jesus. He is Messiah. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the King of Kings. He's our Savior. He's the one that's going to give us eternal life by trusting in Him as our Lord and our Savior. What a glorious Jesus we have to worship here today. People have been worshiping Him down through centuries. They've just passed it along to us. And we're going to pass it along to the next. And I want to thank you for bringing the young ones. They're in Sunday school right now, many of them. Thank you, because you're passing it on to the next. They were good. They're going to be the ones in here one day, bringing their children. You're setting a precedence for them. You're showing them what, it, what we should be doing as believers. We should be worshiping our Lord on the Lord's day, the day he rose again from the dead. You're serving the Lord by being here today. God bless you for that. And there's only one that can save us, and his name is Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and your personal Savior, then you've missed it all because Jesus saves. I told you about that story one time that Jesus and, and, and Satan said, okay, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I know more about this computer than anything in the world. I'm going to show you I know I can do that. Man, they both got on a computer. Jesus and him on their computers working on something. All of a sudden, it crashed. Satan said, I lost it all, and went over there and just says, but Jesus saves. Anyway. <laughs> so about every, about every third word, save it, okay? <laughs> Have you ever lost it all in the computer? Oh, man, Jesus saves. And with that, very short this morning and sweet, Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. 
that the gift of God is eternal life. How? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's no other answer. You're never going to find it anywhere in the Bible other than this. Romans 5, 8. But God commended. He showed his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When he died 2,000 years ago on that cross, he died for your sins today. It's a continuing salvation. that You can continually be saved through Jesus Christ today. Yes, you're not beyond it. I don't care what you've done. The only sin that's going to keep you out of heaven completely is the sin of non-belief. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Romans 5, 8, he commended his love toward us. While we were yet sinners, Christ, a greater than Solomon is here, died for us. Revelation 3.20, behold, I'm standing at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens that door, I'm going to come into them. I'm going to sup with them and them with me. Romans 10, 9 through 11. And thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with a heart one believes unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him, should not be ashamed. And in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever, that's whoever. Anybody, anybody's able. I don't care how bad you've been. I don't care how good you think you've been. Anybody can be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father God, we come to you this morning. There's much